Welcome, and thank you for being here with me today. I am so happy to have you here with me, and I'm so happy to have the person that I have with me here today. I keep emphasizing that, but I can't even begin to tell you. Her name is Emily Sellis, and Emily is the founder and CEO of Sage Holistic Health and Wellness Center in Tustin, California. And um, I met Emily not too long ago, but I had the feeling that we were kind of aligned, not kind of, I'm starting to find out that we're very much aligned in our views of healing. As you all know, I believe in allopathic medicine, but I also think that there's a space for um, holistic medicine. And I think this is where Emily and her center come in. Um, I, would like you to I would like to read a, co a, a quote that Emily gave me and, um, Emily believes in a world where people don't just exist to get by. Rather, they look back at the end of their life and say that they, that was worth it. Her organization makes this belief a reality by turning lives filled with have-tos into ones filled with want-tos. Emily and her team of holistic healers works with people who know there's more to life as their guide to help them integrate their proven method, the SAGE method designed to upgrade their, their way of being and offers them a complete life transformation. So this is what I'm hoping that you will get out of this. Um, I believe in so many, there are so many paths to healing. And I think that maybe this can be something that you all can look at and maybe find something for yourself there. So let me bring Emily on with us. Emily, nice to see you. Thank you for being with us. And this is Emily Sellis. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> you guys don't know this, but this is take two because we tried to do this before and I didn't hit record. So <laughs> Emily's being very patient with me and we're doing this again. So Emily, once again, thank you for being with me. I'm so happy you're, so you're here. It's so nice to be here. I would really like you to tell us about SAGE. I think SAGE is an important entity in Orange County, California intestine right and I think from what I am understanding about SAGE is that it's a tremendous resource and um, it's also an acronym so if you could tell me what SAGE is um, I know you founded it you're the CEO and but you have this team that you've brought together and um, can you tell us about it what it is and why yeah oh absolutely um, and first of all too I'm just we all we all do these little snafus. I am I do these things all the time. So I'm just so glad we can do take two together. We just jump in. Like, this is life, right? This is there's like a million takes. But um, yeah, I'm just so glad to be here with you and get to just spend some time with you. It's not often we get to just sit and have a chat. I, I just love it. So thank you for having me, Margie. Um, to answer your question, I have to kind of like step back a little bit to, to answer the question of what SAGE means, because there is a lot that goes into that. We've um, coined this the SAGE method for how we approach health and wellness. And the point behind it is that we really want to simplify health and wellness, right? So the holistic world of alternative complementary medicine, I mean, even the medical world, the allopathic world of Western medicine, there's just so many options. There's so much information out there. And so what we really intend to do is to help simplify things. And so we simplify these into the four pillars of wellness is what, I, what, what we refer to them as. So we've got nutrition, exercise or body movement, mental health, and spirituality. So we've got these four pillars. And then the ground of this, the foundation is community. I am such a diehard community fan because it's also extremely hard to do. I, like I, like I mentioned, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Every single client that I've had has had difficulty with relationships because relationships are difficult. And so there can be situations with people that can cause us to want to pull back and to not invest ourselves in the same way to not lead with an open heart or to be trusting to move forward, but yet we are a social species and we need each other. We really need each other to be able to thrive. So of this um, structure that I'm creating, the four pillars, nutrition, exercise, mental health, spirituality, the ground of that, the foundation is community. 
and what keeps the roof overhead, what keeps us from getting all of the elements rain down on us is compassion. And that's compassion for ourselves in the process of healing or the process of, of getting help or finding our true sense of self. Um, it's the self-compassion to not stay in judgment of ourselves because the second we jump into judgment, we're off our game. We're further away from where we wanted to go. And same with others, like the judgment of others. Sometimes this can be us even projecting our fears and, and all of that onto other people. But we, we do the judgment thing of other people. And that also holds us back from deep and meaningful connections. So that's the uh, the roof overhead. And so I really see this as, as this um, little holistic house, the way that we can do this, these four pillars, the community, the self-compassion, and the sage method comes in as a way to be your roadmap home. How do you always know where to go? We don't always know where to go. And so there's a big part of leaning into uncertainty and how do we get more certain is through stillness. So being able to get quiet, slow down the busyness. Yes. Yeah, so huge, but how hard, right? <laughs> then the awareness, like, well, what thing are we going to focus on? What thing are we going to bring into our intentional awareness to do something about it? It takes a lot of effort and energy to get into that awareness. Guidance, okay, acknowledging when we need help. When do we need to, to either get a guide or hire a guide? It doesn't always have to be paid for, but getting a mentor, who are we going to open up to that has been there before that we can gain some insight from? And then the E stands for education. When do you need to just fill your mind with more knowledge? Knowledge is powerful. And so these are the, these are the, the this is the stage method that kind of guides people back home, guides them back to their place. And, and that's really how we're seeing things at, at Sage. So, so let me ask you, so you, you have like this team of people that, that are there to support, right? And to guide. And, yeah. Um, so who, what, what modalities comprise the actual, the, the team that you have there? So the team that we have right now, we offer um, mental health as our main service that we offer. So we've got a team of five therapists. We're actually hiring some more right now, but we've got five therapists on staff and that's our main service because we are still a newer company. Um, but we also do have a nutritionist and then we have a spiritual coach we also have uh, myself as a Reiki uh, master and Reiki healer uh, practitioner. And another one of our therapists is also a Reiki healer. Um, I teach and certify in Reiki as well because I just absolutely love um, the universal life force energy there. It's wonderful. But these are the services that we offer right now. Um, and we're also really working hard on some other programs that are more dedicated to kind of this overarching you know, the four pillars and how do we incorporate that? Because I, as you, I'm sure you and I probably align on this. It's like, well, will you focus on one thing? And it's amazing. Like if you're focusing on nutrition, you can do so much with nutrition alone, right? But when you start adding other things too, okay, well now I'm also going to take care of my mental health because my mental, my mindset is off. It doesn't have to be therapy, right? But focusing on the mindset or focusing on the mental health, like you just start supercharging it, right? And then you bring in your body movement, your exercise, and it's like, whoa, I didn't even know I could go that high. I didn't know I could feel that good. And then if spirituality is important to you, and it's not to everybody, but if it is, you add that component in and it's like, okay, everything is clicking along. We're moving, we're like supercharged forward. So there are so many pieces here that, um, that are important in some of these programs that we're working on developing I mean, we do have um, one of our directors is also a you know master's level kinesiologist, master trainer and all of this. So bringing in some of those physical components as well. Um, but we're building this for what the people want. That's what we're that's what we're doing carefully to to meet with people and make sure that we're that we're building these programs accordingly. So I love that. And, you know, when you say not everybody needs spirituality or something like a lot, not everybody thinks they need spirituality, right. but everybody needs a purpose. Yes, so yes. That's part of that spirituality, yeah. is finding that purpose, right? So true. The, yeah. moment, the moment we do, we start to find that spiritual entity that we didn't know was there. Um, yeah, so I love that. I, I, I oh my gosh, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, because I get excited because I like yeah. bringing things that excite me to people, right? I mean, so, and I thought, and I, I was pretty sure I was going to feel this way about it, but I'm so <laughs> Um, tell me a little bit. I don't know that much about Reiki, and I yeah. 
And it's funny because, you know, I practice yoga and I right. do a lot of phys physical healing, hands-on stuff. But I, as far as the Reiki, I don't know a lot about it. Can you tell us a little bit? Oh my bit? gosh. Yeah, I love Reiki. I've been, uh, I've been a Reiki master and doing Reiki and teaching Reiki. This has been over 10 years. So I've, I've got a long history and I love my Reiki master, who is my mentor, just really did an amazing job and a service to how she taught Reiki. And so she, um, hmm, where do I begin? <laughs> like, there's so much. Well, what's so, the principle of it? I guess what, the okay. principle of it. Yeah. So Reiki is, it's, it's Japanese. So the kanji for this, like, so Rei is like universal or sun or God, mm -hmm. and then Ki is energy. Okay. okay. And so you put these together and, and it translates to universal life force energy. So it's really, it's not like Reiki. It's like everything. It's energy. Right. So it's like that God. Yeah. What was that? You're tapping into that source. Yes. It's source energy. That's, that's all that it is. Cause I know sometimes it can feel like, oh, well, this is Reiki. So that's different. And it's like, no, it's, that's just the word for it, okay. but it means universal life force energy. So as a Reiki practitioner, if you were to go get a Reiki healing, um, there's a lot of different approaches. There's traditional, there's non-traditional, there's hands on, there's hands off. I practice and I teach hands off um, healing. So you're working in that aura, the one to three inches above the person's energy. And, and I um, I am a skeptic at heart. So believe me, I have done all the testing and trying and, and trying not to believe it, but here I am still standing, right? We go through our own kind of scientific <laughs> rigmarole, but, um, but our, our body's boundary is our skin, right? But the energy is always moving and, and, and vibrating off of us. And so that's where, where we're working. And so the concept behind Reiki is that you're trying to increase the universal life flow energy that the person receiving it gets. So you're increasing that, you're opening that up. And then you're also clearing out stagnant energy that might not, you know, be serving the person. You're letting that move through and you're, you're just making room for more of that energy to come in. So there's work with the chakras. This is where, you know, what Eastern philosophies will see as that energy culmination in different areas. And so, yeah. yeah, so there's different areas of that. And so you're working on clearing that out. But the Reiki practitioner themselves, this is how it differs from something like acupuncture, right? Or acupressure. That acupuncturist or acupressurist is going specifically to a certain spot based on their learning and teaching and saying, I'm going to do this and it's going to alleviate this, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cause and effect. With Reiki energy, we can be moving our hands or doing whatnot in different places, but this is a 50-50 with source and with the practitioner. I am the intentional vessel. I am opening myself up to be a channel or a conduit of this energy and translating that to the person. So I'm not in charge of the healing, right? Sources, right. here right. it is. And so I'm just, act, I'm a willing um, channel my Reiki energy like totally turns on whenever I talk about this that's all running everywhere but um <laughs> but yeah so that's that's really how Reiki works and so people can utilize Reiki for so many different things like physical healing emotional healing spiritual healing mental healing um I have several clients who just utilize it for stress relaxation <laughs> like stress reduction mm -hmm. um but there's, um, there is kind of an intuitive sense to it where you start to learn how to tune into the subtle energies um, and you're able to kind of dip in a little bit deeper with Reiki. So hopefully that kind of answers some questions. No, it does, you know, because I've, I've, I've met people that practice Reiki, but I've never asked them, so how does it work? And, and yeah. I think there are a lot of people, people like me, you know, that say, I've heard the word and you, you're not, not that you're embarrassed to ask, but you kind of are, yeah. right? And so it's nice to have somebody that can explain it and say, this is how it works. And I think a lot of the people that are here or that will be watching this practice yoga or some form mm -hmm. of, of that kind of practice. So they understand that prana yeah. energy source yeah. because that's what we do. And so when you have somebody that's coming and being an ally to you to help you lift that sort, that's that energy and help you, um, yeah bathe in it if you want to call it that right in in mm -hmm. in such a way that way that brings balance to the body how beautiful is that right oh my gosh yes and you know it's not reiki is not a religion it's not considered a religion it's a spiritual practice and although i have a lot of students that come to me to learn reiki because they want to do it professionally um 
there is like this ultimate benefit that you get anytime we're working on ourselves, right? That, that every time you're running that Reiki energy, you're running that energy through you. But there's also a lot of practices for self-healing. There's a lot of practices for clearing your space, protecting your space, because energetically, a lot of people are empaths or they're able to really sense energy in different areas. And so I have found Reiki to be just an incredible, beautiful spiritual practice personally. Um, little pick me up of energy when I need it throughout the day, clearing my space, just kind of centering and grounding myself. So there's a lot of, a lot of ways that Reiki uh, can be really helpful for people. That's lovely. I, like I said, it's very much in line with, with what I do or what we do, but it, it's a different modality. And I think sometimes we need to find a different modality, maybe similar, but yeah. that little tweak that that's where that's what's meant for us it right? clicks yeah. right exactly yeah. it's necessary for things to click for us so that's yeah. what I love about you talking about it because well think about it try it why not if if you've tried other things let's try this and especially I think intention has so much to do with healing yeah so oh yeah your intention is what's being translated into from source into yep. and and there you can't it's hard to put um a value or a a figure on that you know um, right until you experience it so yeah, and I, I love what you said about margie about like that there, there's different things that click in or the different things that uh, that call to people i think um i don't know if you ever read or listen to joseph campbell's work um this you know very well well-spoken cultural anthropologist and mythologist and he is just incredible he's passed on now but his teachings are about indigenous cultures and what they um, they're the truths that they have and one of the things that his like a tagline one of his sayings that I just love is to follow your bliss and it's I think that that goes into effect even with healing it's like and, and anything we want to be following what lights you up it yeah. doesn't what lights you up Marge you may not be what lights me up but exactly. you go for that you run towards that thing and then you course correct when it's not. And I think that's such an important piece and part of healing. And this is part of why I created and put so much effort into the Holistic Healers of OC. I, uh, this is a group of almost a thousand professionals that come together is because there's so many ways to heal. There's so many methods and it's not going to be all that, that Sage offers at our center, right? So when I have a client who I think can benefit from something else, I want them to have those options. I want them to know of all the other ways and educate themselves and experience that and get another guide and keep moving forward because this is such a beautiful array of healing that we get to that we get to dip into and and you know and and we and we as as we as we go on we evolve and we evolve into different things right different yeah. our needs change and and so what may you know i remember i opened a a woman's worth once I opened this book, you know, by Marianne Williamson. And, and I thought, what is this? I closed it. <laughs> thought, oh my God. Well, a couple of years later, I picked it up. It's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't Same ready person. for it. Yeah. Different time. Yes. So it's, I, you know, yeah, that I teach yoga and that I'm into any of this is really, um, anybody that knew me, before getting yeah. us or, or when I was younger would think there's no way Margie would be doing any of this. So I now, I never say never to anything because, yeah. it's, you know, um, why does something come to us? And if somebody's watching this, why is it coming to you? Maybe, maybe you should kind of take a look at it and, and, and check it out and see what it is. Right. Yeah. That natural curiosity that we lose as we get older because yeah. we get bogged down by responsibility and the way that things are supposed to be. I mean, really undoing that and just getting back to that childlike curiosity of like, huh, what's that? I wonder what that is. If there's something that's said, taking the time to to get still. Like I, I come back to that sage method, yeah. like getting still and being like, is that worth looking at, right? Like listening to yourself a bit. Is that worth looking at and, and bringing more into your awareness to do something about? Yeah, no, and and it has to be what sounds right to you. Yeah. How, did, how does it feel to you? And um, at any given moment in time, just listen, tune in. Yes, oh my gosh, yes. Because 
because you what was not the frequency yesterday doesn't mean it's not the frequency today so tune in at that yeah. moment in time yeah um yeah. emily so let me ask you so the holistic healers you it's you you form this group right and actually i'm, I'm one of the members now too yeah <laughs> but um but so what how do how do we find how would somebody find um it, is there a directory um, how, how do we go about finding somebody, for example, I wanted to find somebody to do therapy um, for somebody that had a stroke. Yeah. And they, they've, there's been therapy, but I would like alternative therapy for that. I don't want the traditional. Um, so what, if, if I were to look for somebody like that, what would I look for? Yeah. So you're talking about like specific place of where to go and how to guide, like direct people where to go. Is that what yeah, you're asking? Like, yeah, you have yeah. This group, right? Yeah. But we know how to get to Sage. So now how do we get to the holistic healers? How do, how do we find out about them? And this is such a great question. Yeah. Cause this group just continues to grow organically. I've been like, okay, I will do this. <laughs> right? I will be the person and it just continues to grow. And so I've got some really exciting things in the works for like, like you mentioned, directories and things like that of how to get more public facing with the holistic healers. But presently, the way that they would get in touch with like referrals like that would be to, to join the private Sage community, which is a free place to come and really dig into your holistic living. It's on a platform called Circle. And um, I'm not sure if you're on there yet, Margie, but it's, um, it's this, I love, I love, I'm just so in love with this. It's like a virtual wellness community. And so it's similar to Facebook, but on Facebook, there's so many distractions. I love Facebook and I, it's been a wonderful place for me, but I think this is just kind of next level in that there's no advertisements, there's no distractions and things like that. So you get to come into this community and really focus on, we've got free holistic trainings every month. We've got free holistic hangouts, which is more like ceremonial and kind of like a little bit of Reiki that we kind of throw in. Um, and then there's just the community base, but in there, in there, there's a space called ask for referrals. And that's where the, they get to kind of put in, because I think that's a lovely part about Facebook groups that I, that I'm like, I've got to bring this into our private community of like the wealth of knowledge that's available in the community, right? So there's right now it's an ask for referral and that's where a designated space is. And then a lot of my holistic healers are in this sage community because they themselves want to live a more holistic lifestyle and they want community around that as well so if that if that answers the question that's kind of a place where they can do that or they can reach out to me and I can kind of try it right now it's just not as connected as it will be once some of these uh, once some of these offerings I'm working on come out so what we can do then is um we will put the information when we when we upload this, I'll have the information on on that. Okay. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'll get a, a right to the space where they can ask for referrals. If there's a right. a referral that you need and you're looking right now, it's just Orange County um, based clinicians and and practitioners that are in the holistic healers. But I mean, it's been a beautiful thing. I've had people from all over the world really. They've been reaching right. out to be part of holistic healers, and I'm like, okay, we can't just only be selfish here in Orange County. We got to like open this up. So there will be more coming with that. The first thing to do would be just get into the Sage community, that private Sage community, and there is a space in there where you can ask specifically for referrals, but mostly just be in there for you. There's a place to celebrate yourself, what the, your wins are and your hard days that we get to celebrate that together as a community. Like I said, it's foundational. I'm a community diehard. And this is a place to, to just have your people that you get to come in and kind of take a deep breath when you get centered in there and think, okay, how do I want to connect with these people? Or how do I want to engage and be part of this? Okay. That sounds terrific. So we'll put that on and then we'll put your all your contact information, all the pertinent information so yeah. that we can get a hold of that. Because I think, again, like I said, I, I this person that I'm thinking about has been through all the traditional um, therapy, but I yeah. know there's more that can be done and it's not being done yeah. in that traditional therapy. So where do yeah. I go? And this sounds like the perfect place to turn. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's so much um, creativity too. Like, even if there's not a person in there, it's like just posing that question, it gets everyone else thinking, right? Cause think of all the healers and who they know it's that seven degrees of separation. Right. Cause really when you have heart centered, abundant minded people like that, we've really shifted towards that. I believe as we've gotten more and more into this 21st century, it's, 
it's not about who's taking that client and pay, and charging them for what they're getting, right? It's about this client is a person and they need help. And so how can we rally around them as a community and just throw in our collective consciousness and figure out how, how we can help, right? And that's a big part. I mean, I know even for the services that we do offer at Sage, I mean, that's always in the back of our mind. And I know, you know, more corporate or like, kind of like hard nosed places might say, don't do that. But we, we do that here at Sage because we're such big community fans. It's like, if someone's calling for a therapist and we don't have someone that that is seeming like the best fit for them, then we have referrals and we just offer that along. So really important, I think, to get connected with the right services. Yes. I, you know, um, as a healer, I think it's part of, of that healing process. I think yeah. we don't take that oath, but I think it's part of that code that we, we need to keep in mind. Right. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, is there anything exciting that's coming up, Emily, that like that we should know about? I mean, what, what's the date today? We're in July. It's like the 19th, I think, right? July yeah. 2022. Um, so whoever's going to watch this in the next few weeks, is anything coming up that maybe some, some of the people that are going to watch this would be interested in, in doing or seeing or. That yeah. You know, oh my gosh. I'm glad you asked because my summer has been full of preparations, busy preparations for, um, for a conference that I'm hosting. So Sage is hosting this inaugural event. It is called the holistic experience and body healing and rise together. So encompassing all these things that we've talked about today, Margie, it's, it's bringing the community together to have an experience with each other, but in a healing environment where they are actually having tangible takeaways from the speakers. We're going to have three different stages going on at the same time with three different speakers. One of the stages is called experiential speakers. So they're actually like sitting in, in a circle, you know, and doing the work they're, they're sitting in and doing breath work. They're sitting in and doing a sound healing. And then we have like a, a medium <laughs> coming and we have um, a psychiatrist that's going to be there. We have a, such a broad variety of healers from this holistic healers of Orange County. And it's going to be incredible. We've got booths, we've got demo booths, which is where you get to actually have a one-on-one. We've got a, someone doing holistic facials in there. Uh, we've got a massage therapist. We've got yoga instructors, you know, where it's just a hands-on experience of healing and it's going to be, it's going to be incredible. So this is coming up September 10th. Okay. If it, if you're listening to this and it's not past, we would love to have you come over and check out the landing page and see if that feels right to you um, to attend. Cause it's going to be just a beautiful day of healing. Where is it? Where is it going to be? It's going to be in Tustin um, at the Tustin community center at the marketplace. Um, so it's right there. I think it's right by the CPK. If anyone is local listening, um, but it's a gorgeous, um, it's a gorgeous facility in there. And it's going to, it's going to be fun. We're also doing like an after party hobnob with the healers where they get to like, if they want to upgrade their ticket, they can hang out with all the speakers and sponsors and, and have some hors d'oeuvres and cocktails and things like that. So it's going to be just a fun all around day. Okay, so that's, that's, well, we'll put the information down for that too, or for where, yeah. they, can they get in contact with you? Do they email? How, how do they go about finding out more about this? Yeah, so I'll um, give you the link to our landing page and it has all the details. It's got like bio for all the speakers. Um, we haven't submitted the schedule yet, but we'll be submitting that probably beginning of August. So you can see like actual title names of the talks and see if it's something that you really want to get into. Um, but they are doing like, goodie bags for the first 100 people they're going to be pretty off the goodie Uh, bags so yeah so (laughs) the landing page is where to go and get in if you know this is something that is calling you yeah oh I I wish I were in town for this I know I'm 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 not gonna be here (laughs) um okay so let me ask you so is there will will your sage um page your web page will it have anything on it yeah, so if we go to our website, it's just on the top bar. There's actually the a, a button for community. That's how you get into the Sage, the private Sage community. And then there's a conference button, and that's what'll take you right there. So that might be just the easiest, um, but I can give you those separate links as well. Whatever makes it easiest. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, Emily! I'm so glad we talked. I'm oh, really me glad too. And and I hope whoever's watching. Um, understands what a valuable resource you are putting together with all these healers and 
in sage, of course, but then it's so much bigger than that. It as goes well. bigger, yeah. It yeah. is bigger. And it's um it's so valuable because normally we hear about somebody over here, we hear somebody over there, or somebody knows, but to have them all in the in the area too. Yeah, yeah. It, it's been like you say, you know, it's for example, I teach and I teach people all over the world. So now they're in this area, but they they can teach anybody anywhere, right? They can right. consult anybody anywhere. So that's yeah. the of it. It's, I know it's the local. I mean, I'm a, I'm just um, I love the local stuff, right? Where you get to just be in person and have all that. I do think I'm going to try to do this conference virtually as well because I think, wait, to your point, like you've been working with people all over the world, right? And and a lot of healing, a lot of services healing. can be done virtually so that's what I want to showcase in the next um in the next event because I'm just this is just too much fun for me <laughs> to bring people oh, together and that. give them all these options it's like it's like top us all over the place it's like well, <laughs> and yes, well, and, well and the other thing so, is you know there are people in parts of the world that don't have access to any of this right oh so, yeah so it's just it's amazing for them right it's a real yes that they wouldn't yeah. have utilized. Oh, it's so, so yeah, true. I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll get to apply to be a speaker. <laughs> there we go. Yes. I'm going to be in town for you. I know. I want to get your schedule ahead of time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. Well, then, thank you. Thank you, Emily. I'm so, I'm, I'm really, really happy we talked. And, and I hope, um, I hope we get the chance to talk again. Oh, my gosh. In person, too. I give you a hug. <laughs> so. Hi. I'm a hugger. Yeah, but I love chatting with you, Margie. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye.